Hello and welcome all. In this video, we'll be talking about motion, the very first chapter of physics class 9. At end of the discussion, we'll be able to know about a state of motion and rest, the concept describing the position of the object. Motion is relative in nature and then we'll discuss the basic understanding of scalar and vector quantities. Going forward, we'll see uniform and non-uniform motion using graphical methods and then we'll see displacement, velocity and acceleration. We'll be taking numericals and graphical understanding as well. Can you guess what is the literal meaning of motion? And I hope you can simply answer me. Motion is some kind of shifting or movement. Yes, and this is what we need at the beginning of our session to take motion as. Now, look at your surrounding and observe whatever you see for a moment. Whatever you look just now, I can guess two things which must be the part of your observation. And that includes for sure that the objects you saw were either idle or were showing some kind of movement. Now look at the video clip and observe. In everyday life we see some objects at rest and other in motion. Birds fly, fish swim, blood flows through veins and arteries and car moves. Atoms, molecules, planets, stars and galaxies are all in motion. In fact, motion forms an integral part of our life. All microscopic and macroscopic objects in the universe show some kind of movement. Now, can you give me an example showing the state of rest? <laughs> Easy, right? Book kept on table, dog sleeping under tree, person sitting on a fixed chair, car parked in the parking area and so on. You can cite many examples. And if I ask you, how did you confirm that they were at rest? Simple. You found all the objects you just talked about were not changing its position and were not moving in respect to the chosen fixed point in the surrounding. But now, I ask you to look at the same scenario from the eyes of an astronaut who is far away from the earth. And what do you feel now? Well, all our observation got changed. With the movement of Earth, everything on it appeared to be moving. If you dive in the universe and keep exploring, trust me, you will not find a known fixed point anywhere in the space. No such fixed point is known in the universe and hence nothing in the universe is at absolute rest. And that's why it is difficult to know if the object is at absolute rest. Hmm. Then how to say if the body is at rest or motion? As a solution, what we do is we select a fixed point in the immediate surrounding of the object and this point is named as a reference point. So going forward, we will use this reference point to find the state of the object. Please note the reference point for the study of motion is referred to as origin. Now we will see when the object can be said at rest. Object can be said at rest in two cases. Case 1, the object as well as the origin are at rest in the given plane. Case 2, the object as well as the origin are moving in the same direction at same speed. Example of case 1, dog sleeping under tree, here the object and the reference point both are in rest. Example of case 2, two cars moving in the same direction at same speed. If the passenger from each car look at other, they feel they are in rest as position of none of them changes with respect to each other. So with this understanding, we can define an object is said to be in motion if its position changes continuously with respect to a fixed observer or reference point. Similarly, an object can be said at rest if its position does not change with respect to a fixed observer or reference point. Let us understand with the help of a visual. Consider O as a point fixed on a plane and an object A moves on the plane so that the position of A keeps on changing with respect to O. Then A is said to be in motion with respect to O. Alright, so this gives us the understanding how the position of the object changes with respect to the origin. So before we proceed further, just look at the situation of the image soon and try to find who is right here. So you can definitely answer me and the answer is both. In fact, the answer of the question is in its location. The answer is based on which side the letter is being observed, correct? 
Take the example of aeroplane. Observer on the ground will see the plane in motion. However, to each of the passengers sitting in the plane, all other passengers are at rest. When a train is running on the track, the object outside such as trees, buildings, people appear to move backwards. This happens because there is relative change of the position between the observer and the objects. So far, our discussion revealed motion of an object is relative to either the frame of reference of the observer or to another distinct frame of reference and hence motion is relative in nature. Now we will see how to describe the position of the object. The position of the object can be described by its actual location and its direction from the fixed reference point. Let us take the help of the Cartesian axis. Here we can see we have two axes and where the axis meets, we mark it as an origin. Position x is taken towards right of the origin and negative x is taken towards the left of the origin. Positive y is taken upwards and negative y is taken downwards of the origin. In geographical direction, east is taken towards right of the origin and west is taken towards the left of the origin. North is taken upwards and south is taken downwards of the origin. Now we'll see some object location with the help of some examples. Example 1, when the object location is on one of the Cartesian axes, say, positive x at 3 units away from the origin towards east. Second example we can take as when the object is in between the axis in northeast direction. Okay, so now let's figure out the location of the object which is 1 meter away from the origin at 40 degree west north and another object which is 2 meter towards south. Just pause the video and try to locate the object location. Alright, so here is the solution. So I hope you understood the concept discussed so far about a state of rest and motion and why reference point is important and how to find or locate the position of the object. And now it is the time to talk about physical quantities and going forward we will see the basics of scalar and vector quantities. In physics, anything which can be quantitatively defined and measured is termed as physical quantity. A physical quantity has following components, numerical component, unit of measurement and direction in a space if required. A physical quantity can be expressed as the combination of magnitude and a unit. For example, physical quantity of mass can be quantified as n kg where n is the magnitude and kg is the unit. Other examples are length, mass, time and distance etc. With this understanding, let us see what are scalar and vector quantities. A scalar quantity is the physical quantity which has only magnitude. Example, length, distance, area, volume, time, temperature, etc. Talking about vector quantity, physical quantity which has both magnitude and direction for its complete description is termed as vector quantity. Examples, displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, weight, etc. Now we'll see how to represent a vector quantity. Vector quantities are either written in bold letter or letter having an arrow over it. Graphically, a vector quantity can be represented by an arrow where length of the arrow represents magnitude and the arrow head represents the direction. Okay, now we will draw displacement vector of 1 meter, 30 degree west north through the graph. Okay, so discussions we have so far introduced the basics of scalar and vector quantities which will solve our purpose in class 9. You will read the detailed discussion of vectors in your higher classes. Okay, so let us keep a pause to this video and we will see the remaining topics in coming videos. If you have any query, keep me posted and subscribe the channel to get the further updates.